me go ahead and show you another problem or two here um, that'll look a little bit different than these. So, for instance, something like this, how about limit delta x approaches zero of x plus delta x squared minus x squared all over delta x. Now, some people might look at this and be like, whoa, what the heck's up with this? There's a delta x, there's all this weird stuff. This is prepping you for what you're going to see uh, once you start derivatives. So, this is just getting you used to some notation so it's not too foreign to you once you start the derivative process, uh, you know, next chapter. So, um, delta x, just want to make sure clear, that is one variable altogether. I know I've had some students that that confuses them and they would decide, I'm going to replace that. I'm going to put, you know, y wherever I see delta x because they just get confused thinking it's a delta and an x are two separate variables. But this is one variable altogether. Sometimes you'll see h instead of delta x in derivative problems. But again, let's plug it in. Plug in 0. Plug 0 into delta x there. Plug 0 into delta x there. And, um, you know, it's clearly 0 on the bottom. On the top, if you simplify it, you get x squared minus x squared, which is going to be 0. So 0 over 0. Let's see if you can simplify this. Okay? In this case, the route's going to be, when you come to a problem like this, you're going to expand everything out, and you'll notice that things will cancel. And you'll notice that's going to happen when you get to derivatives as well. So I have the limit as delta x approaches 0. Expand that out. So it's going to be, you know, when I square things, that means I square the first one, x squared. Squared means you're going to do multiply these together and then times 2. So plus 2x delta x. Square that guy plus delta x squared and then minus x squared. This is just coming down right here. Okay, then I notice I have my x squareds that cancel out right there. That's good stuff. Okay, and I also notice that in the terms that I have left on the top, these two, they both have a delta x in them. So what I can do is I can factor that out. Factor out the delta x. And so my first term when I factor out delta x, I'm just left with the 2x. The second term when I factor delta x out, I just have one delta x left over. And on the bottom, I still have delta x. And the cool thing about that is, now these delta x's cancel. So let's see here. Then I'm going to have um, the limit, you know, I have left the limit of delta x approaches 0 of 2x plus delta x. This portion is all that's remaining. So now I can just plug 0 in for delta x, and I'm done. My answer is 2x. So you'll see here, kind of different from the previous limit problems, that this ends up being, um, you know, has a variable in the answer. It has 2x, has x in the answer. But that's okay. That's what this limit is in this case. And you'll see again, as you get into derivatives, you know, what that really means. Okay? All right. One more problem on this type of stuff. So if you are given something like this, to, so you want to evaluate, evaluate the limit as delta x approaches 0 of f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x. All right, so you're asked to evaluate that, and you could be given the function f of x to evaluate it for. So, you know, it could be, there could be several different types of functions that you could be evaluating here. All right, so um, let's say we're evaluating that for, oh, f of x is equal to um, x squared minus 2x, okay? So we want to evaluate this given that f of x equals x squared minus 2x. So it's a little tricky, and this always is, I remember when I first learned this, it was a weird thing. But um, what we want to do is we want to replace stuff into this right here, okay? 
So where we see f of x plus delta x, we want to use this to help us replace what we see there. So remember, our function that we're using here is f of x equals x squared minus 2x. So if this is our f of x, then that means that f of x plus delta x, what you do for this is you just take the x plus delta x and you put it in anywhere you see an x in the function. Because notice, however, just in the, on the left side of the equation, I've replaced x plus delta x with x, so I've got to do the same thing on the right side. So where I see an x here, I'm going to replace that with x plus delta x. Minus, oh, I'm sorry, and then I have a squared also, because this is x squared, so now it's going to be x plus delta x squared. Minus 2 times, and instead of an x, it's going to be x plus delta x. Okay? So that's a little weird. So now what I want to do is, so where I see f of x plus delta x in my limit here, I'm going to replace it with this. And where I see f of x, I'm going to replace it with this. So here we go. Limit delta x approaches 0 of, again, so right here, I'm, so this is what I'm getting to. I'm, I'm rewriting this, but instead of putting f of x plus delta x, I'm writing this, because for this particular function, that's what f of x plus delta x is equivalent to. Now if it equals, it's the same as, so you can use it and replace it. Alright, so you can see that right there. Now minus f of x, I've got to make sure I distribute the negative, so I'm going to put parentheses around my f of x when I put it in there. So again, f of x plus delta x is this part, f of x is this part, and I put my you know, parentheses to make sure I distribute that. And then it's all over delta x. Sorry, my deltas kind of look all crazy. And again, this you might be looking at like, what is the point of this? This is crazy. This is just trying to get you familiar with some notation that you'll see later on. So now, like in the last one, I've got to expand this all out. Holy cow, let's see here. Limit is delta x approaches 0 of, expand that out. So use the same rules. Square the first. Multiply the, the first and second together and times 2. 2x delta x. Square the second, delta x squared. Minus, so now I'm just distributing the 2 times the x, so minus 2x, minus 2 delta x. Then I'm distributing that negative, minus x squared, plus 2x. All over delta x. Alright, so let's see here what I can simplify. I notice I have a x squared here, I have a negative x squared here. Those cancel out. Um, let's see here, what else do I have? I have a minus 2x here, I have a plus 2x here. Those cancel out. The rest of my terms have a delta x in it. Okay, just like with the last one. Alright, so um, I'm going to come up here and do the limit as delta x approaches 0 of... Now the terms that I have remaining, I'm going to factor a delta x out of. So this first term then will be left with 2x. This next term will be left with just delta x, plus delta x. My last guy right here will be left with minus 2 over delta x. And, you know, works out. The delta x's cancel each other out. So then it's going to be the limit. The delta x approaches 0 of um, 2x plus delta x minus 2. Once I cancel those out, Last step, just plug 0 in, it's a 2 right there, it doesn't look like a 2, but it's supposed to be. Plug a 0 into delta x and I'm done. My answer is 2x minus 2. So there's several different types of problems um, of evaluating limits analytically. And hopefully, you know, that was helpful. Alright, want to look at just some basic properties of limits real quick. Um, I'm not going to go over all of them. I'm kind of doing this within an in an example, so I'm not actually writing the properties out. But pretty pretty straightforward, I think. Hopefully, from this, you'll be able to figure out what's going on. So, if you're given, so this information over here is given. Okay, so this stuff right here is given, and these are like problems that you want to complete based on this given information. So we have this limit right here tells us that you know the function f of x as x approaches c is equal to 5. We're given that. Same thing with g of x as x approaches c, that limit equals 8. So we can use that to figure this out. So there's different um, properties of limits. 
Um, and I, you know, I'm not one to memorize the names of all the properties and so forth. The, this first one, just reference, is called the scalar multiple property. Okay. So if uh, if we know that this is true, then if we're taking the limit of x as x approaches c of five times the function f of x, then the the limit is just going to be five times whatever the limit was, um, you know, of uh, back here. So it's just going to be five times 5, since we know the limit as x approaches f of c of f of x is 5, so that answer would be 25. The limit as x approaches c of f of x and g of x, this uh, is part of the sum or difference one, so I've shown an addition one, but the same thing would work with subtraction. Um, you know, you just add the two limits together and you get 13. Right here, it's the uh, quotient one, there's one. Of, there's a product run, there's a power one, so I mean it works with all these. You're basically just going to do uh, the, you know, we know that f of x limit is 5, we know that g of x's limit is 8, so we'll just divide that and that's what we get for answer, 5 eighths. So, just a brief overview of limit properties.